Hey guys, C here. Thank you so much for clicking to join me in today's video. Today we are tackling the first of my Make Nine Challenge. Now in a previous video, I discussed my general sewing goals for 2024 as well as nine specific goals that I want to accomplish entitled the Make Nine Challenge. Now I will show you a picture of my board. I won't go into great detail because if you haven't watched that video, I will link it down below so you can go and reference that. Um, but today we are tackling my first of nine and that is to create an apparel piece with buttons and buttonholes. For that challenge, I'm going to be using Simplicity Pattern 9707. This is a pattern that I picked up and mentioned in my Simplicity Pattern haul last year. I will link that down below as well. Um, but I am finally here to tackle this. Now, this is an easy to sew pattern, but it is the first of many for me. It's my first time making a collared blouse. I don't work with wovens that often I have, but I don't work with them that often. But the most frightening part of all is that it has buttons and buttonholes. But I'm ready. We're gonna tackle this and I'm bringing you guys along for the ride. So let's get into it. I'm gonna be sharing with you my setup, my processes, and revealing the final look. Fingers crossed, because I haven't gotten started yet. So this is gonna be in real time. So let's get to it. All right, so when I originally picked up this pattern, I picked up two fabrics from Hobby Lobby, two solid poly satins. The first of which was a bluish silver, a bluish gray, and then this rose gold. Now I ended up using the bluish gray for two other projects. I used it for a lining for a coat and I've cut it up for a skirt. So I'm left with this rose gold. And as time was approaching for me to get started on this project, I just wasn't really vibing with the rose gold anymore. At this point, it's been almost a year since I picked up this fabric as well as the pattern. And so I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's meshing with me. So while I was shopping at Joann's, I found this floral silky print on clearance. And I was like, okay, this might be a great fabric instead. Um, and then the price point was somewhat cheap enough where if the project didn't work out, I didn't feel like I wasted a bunch of money. But once again, I just, it's just not speaking volumes to me. So now it's a make or break moment where I need to figure out which fabric I want to use because I want to cut the pattern pieces as well as the fabric pieces tonight. That's my goal for tonight. And then tomorrow when I get the kids in bed, I want to start sewing. I feel like I need to do any, mini mighty mo to figure out which one I want to work with. I should have done a poll on Instagram, see what you guys think, because I do need a little bit of help. But uh, I think I'm going to go with the rose gold yeah all right let's get started now for those that don't know i have three little kids so i have to do my sewing projects in increments it's very rare that i have a one night sew where i can completely finish a garment so uh tonight i am going to prep and so for me that is uh, reading the instructions making sure that i have all the notions that i need cutting the pattern pieces out and cutting the fabric pieces out and that will be my first form of prep. I'll probably also thread up my machine, put my walking foot on since I'll be working with this poly satin. And then tomorrow night, once I get the kids in bed um, and husband is good, then I'll come back out here to the she shed and I'll start sewing and see how it goes from there. So tonight's goal is prep. Let's get to it. I'm just going to go ahead and start reading the instructions. I like to read them first just to make sure they have a general understanding of what I'm doing and then I'll start cutting. Now, I couldn't decide if I wanted to cut a 10, a 12, or 14. Whenever I'm working with patterns, I always gravitate to cutting the larger size because I'm like, it's better to have a little more give so I can resize it and, and get it perfect. But on the other end of that, I always get frustrated because it's taking so long to get the task done because I put on the garment and it's too big and I have to resize multiple times. And I'm trying to fit myself, which is frustrating because I can't pin and take the garment off the right way. Ugh. Whole rigmarole. Um, and then I'm using a whole bunch of thread 
and I ended up having to rewind the bobbin with more thread. So now, um, in my recent makes, I've been sizing down a little bit. So I've been cutting 10s and 12s, and those have been working out well for the most part, um, except I'm working with knits. So here I am working with a woven, and I don't know what size I should cut. So I went ahead and I cut a 12. Now the pattern, I have two, I have both sizes for the pattern. So I have the 4 to 12 and the 12 to 22, I think. So even if this 12 was too small, I still could have gone and grabbed the other pattern, the other pattern that I have. But I say all that to say, I went ahead and cut a 12. Um, and so now I'm going to pivot onto the floor and cut my fabric out. And I've got my fabric shears, but I'm also going to go over the cuts with my pinking shears. So I'm going to touch these with uh, the iron just to iron these out just a little bit on um, low heat. Then lay out my fabric onto the floor, cut with my fabric shears, and then go over that with my pinking shears. Sounds like a lot. Oh my God, it sounds like a lot. But I am trying to do quality over quantity this year. That is my mantra moving forward. I want to have more quality pieces in my wardrobe. I want my makes to last me several years. And so I know that this fabric is going to fray tremendously. I don't have a serger as of yet. I don't want to do a whole bunch of zigzag stitches because like I said, pet peeve number one, I don't like having to refill the bobbin. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have cut my pattern pieces, cut my fabric pieces, and I decided not to use my pinking shears and go around each piece because it's late and I'm tired. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and transfer my markings and call it a night. As I'm wrapping up for tonight, I was going to go ahead and thread my machine, get that ready to go. So tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, whenever I can get in here, I'm ready to start sewing. But I realized I don't have the right color thread. So I've cut two swatches, the first of which is take with me to the fabric store so I can color match some thread. And I might switch out my, I might switch out my buttons as well. I have some white buttons. Here. I have some off white buttons, so I might swap those for something a little more jazzy. Um, thread and buttons are on sale at Hobby Lobby, so I'm gonna hit those up tomorrow. Take this swatch with me so I can color match my thread, and then this larger piece of scrap fabric this is cut so that I can practice my stitches before I actually start working on my garment. So I'm going to put on my walking foot once I get my thread and my needle threaded up. I'm going to put on my walking foot. I'm just going to practice my stitches, make sure I have the right tension and stitch length and all that kind of stuff. Because once again, I'm working with satin and me and satin, we just don't get along. So that is tonight. It hasn't been a long night, but it's been long enough. So I'm going to head to bed and we'll get back to this tomorrow.
All right, peeps. So tonight is night two. It's been a couple nights since I first started this task. Now I'm finally back in the shed and I'm going to get started with this project. Now, because it's been a few nights, I want to refresh my memory on the directions. So I'm going to give the directions one more read. I think they're about 35 or 40 steps, give or take. So ideally, I would like to get halfway. If I can attach the yoke, the yoke facing and the collar, I will be happy with my progress tonight. And that is where I will stop, fingers crossed. And then tomorrow I can pick up on the sleeves, buttonholes and buttons, fingers crossed. Now I gotta admit, I, I think I'm kind of dragging my feet on this project because I'm really intimidated. I've never done a collared shirt and just reading some of the first few instructions was kind of like, huh, what? Uh, now I'm happy that I haven't invested a lot of money into the material. I think this fabric was between four and five dollars a yard. So not a huge waste, but I don't even want to think that way. And we're gonna put that on my head. All right, let's get started. Now I'm only a few steps in. <laughs> I think I'm on step four. Yeah, I'm on step four. But it appears as though I have successfully put in my first button placard. I'm assuming that is what I just did. And I'm very proud of myself. Those are my basting stitches, so don't judge that. But we're rolling tonight. All right, now let's go ahead and I think my next steps are to put the pleats um, on the back and then we're gonna start attaching the yoke. to pin this here as well to the shoulders okay match up your notches and pin again all i did was start to roll up the back and the front together till i got back up here now we can continue pinning First burrito effect. Let's see if I did it right. Our right, instructions say pull it out one of the sides. Turn your shirt right side out. Oh, I think I did it right. This thing needs to be fixed. Hold up, hold up. Okay, this is my front. The button placard, okay, sides, and then back. Oh, I did it. Oh, I did it. I did it. Oh, oh my God. This looks huge. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, that is awesome. All right. Let me find that stitch and fix that right here. Fix that up. Awesome. All right, back to the machine. Okay, let's do an update. So I am attaching my collar to the shirt, to the blouse, and my notches are not matching up. And that is because my sizing doesn't line up. I, when I'm guessing that when I folded my 
button placard, I went over the allowance. Like I went further than the fold line, which is now causing my collar to be longer than my top. So right here, here is the end of my top. And look, I still have, what is this? Three inches of space. This notch is way in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off and I'm going to cut in this collar. I'm gonna come in about an inch and a half on both sides and see if that helps. I hope so. So I would not wanna get this far and have to scrap it or have to start all over. So let's see how that goes. So I would rather be safe than sorry. And I'm going to sew it before I cut it. So I'm going to sew it, flip it out, apply it to my, um, the back of my blouse and see if it matches up or if the sizing is a little better. Okay, so this is a bit messy, but I'm going to clean it up. I just want to see if this works first. So I went ahead and cut in about an inch and a half here, an inch and a half here, uh, maybe about an inch, an inch on both sides. Let me fold it. And once again, I'm gonna clean this up. I just wanna see if the sizing is better. Okay, not perfect, but it's far better than where we were far better than where we are were so i'm gonna go ahead and flip this back uh wrong side out and cut it and attach it and just pray for the best i'm gonna try it on just in case to make sure it doesn't look too crazy Hey guys so today is january the 28th i got started on this project the 22nd so as we are approaching that one week mark i'm like this is starting to drag out i'm starting to lose my enthusiasm for it but i have to remind myself that today is only the third day this is my third opportunity to get out here and start working on it so last time i was working on it my battery went dead and i couldn't show you what i ended up on let me take you to the dress form all right, so on the dress form is girly here. Now the collar. The collar is jacked up. It is effed up for sure. Um, but my hair is long, so we're going to make it work. And remember, I mess up the collar, and so I'm just trying to remedy the situation without having to scrap it. Now I did end up using some fabric glue, which is drying wet. I don't like that. Once that is nice and pressed and on my neck, it shouldn't look as um, noticeable as well as over here my hair is long so I feel like my hair will drape over it now I'm also noticing that this fabric stains really bad this is I don't know what that's coming from but even down here there's a stain down here as well so I'm not happy about that um, but whatever once I finish up I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice wash so I'm remedying the collar. I think it looks decent. It's better than scrapping it, right? And it's my first time. I really need to give myself some give myself some grace since it's my first time. Today I'm going to be sewing the sides, sewing those pockets together on both sides, and then we're going to head over here and start working on the sleeve work on the sleeve and adding the cuff and then i'll save the buttons for tomorrow it is the weekend so i want to be able to enjoy my kids and my husband before they go to school daycare and work tomorrow so 
let's get to it i don't want to spend a lot of time in here i'm hoping i can tackle this in an hour and go in the house and spend the rest of the day with them Okay, so here is where we are ending up at the end of night three. Got the sleeves on, the under seams match up quite perfectly. Got the pocket in. I didn't know this view had pockets until I cut the pieces out. I would be good without them, but either way, they're there. And cuffs are on. Guess what? My cuffs are on backwards. Did you notice? <laughs> Did you notice? I sit here and debate it if I was going to take all these stitches out and redo it. And yes, I am. I'm going to go ahead and take the cuffs off and flip them because they are definitely backwards. That is supposed to be on the back end. Um, but other than that, we're straight. Now, the sleeves are a bit short. So even with the cuff, maybe we went, this sleeve seems fine, right? But this sleeve is just a hair shorter. And of course, I'm seeing a lot of wrist action because my cuff is on backwards. So I'm going to flip that. <sighs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to fix it, but not tonight. I'm tired. I'm going with the family and I'll pick this up if not tomorrow, later this week. It is day, who knows, of this project. I've lost track because it's taking forever. It's been over a week. I gave Girly here a break. We need to part ways for a minute. Now I'm back. Let's tackle these buttonholes. So I've got the pattern guide for the buttons. Got the blouse here. Buttons on deck. And then I have two large swatches to practice before I start uh, sewing the actual garment. So this big one, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple rough uh, drafts, <laughs> a couple rough drafts, I guess you could say. Uh, some practices of making buttonholes on here. And then when it's time to sew on the button, I'm going to practice on this one. Now, after watching a couple of videos on YouTube, I think I'm ready. We have no other choice. At this point, I just want to be done with this just to see if I can do it and move on to the next because this is killing me. All right, so my blouse is ready to go. I have hemmed it. I have taken care of the cuffs for now. I've cleaned them up for now. I have something in mind for them and I'll talk about that later. But everything is ready to go. Essentially, the blouse is done except now I need to do the buttons and buttonholes. I have practiced a bit to find my scrap off camera i practice a bit here it is on the floor and so i think i got it down pat these are all butchered but don't worry about it i i think i got it so i'm gonna go ahead take this person foot off i watched one more youtube video <laughs> and i think i think i got it i think i got it so Okay, so I'm pop this button in here. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then put it down. Okay. And then I'm going to feed this thread down into the bottom. Perfect. Okay. And. I've already made my markings for the buttons and buttonholes so that I can hopefully breeze right through this. And I'm gonna start at the top, work my way down. Okay. Don't worry about my collar. <laughs> I'll fix it. Okay, line that up with the line that I drew and push this down and back okay all right now I need to change my settings over here 
Buttonhole. All right, that's good to go. Now, let's see what we got here. Is it me or is it not moving? It doesn't seem like it's moving. I don't think it's moving. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so now I gotta take these out. We got a buttonhole. Okay, let's keep going. Difficulty at first, but once I figured out what was going on, everything else went very smooth. Now I feel foolish for being intimidated by them. So now the buttonholes are done. Now we're gonna move on to the buttons. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start practicing figuring out what my width needs to be for my width and um, length need to be for the buttons, and we're gonna call it a night. and buttonholes i'm so excited i'm so proud of myself i'm really happy that i stuck through it um so the process wasn't as daunting as i thought it would be everything did work out well i had a couple hiccups essentially the blouse should be done but remember i've got some issues going on i've got some areas that i need to troubleshoot if i want to be confident in this number one being the collar now i this fabric does stain very badly or at least it has with all that it's been through. So I am going to put it in the wash and let it air dry. But imagine this collar after it's been laundered. Imagine it being pressed really well. Um, but still you've got this imperfection right here. It's noticeable and right here. Now I mentioned earlier that my hair is long enough that it will probably drape over it. But very rarely when I'm dressed up do I have my hair down. But I don't want to be limited to wearing my hair down all the time. I might want to pin it up. So I have come up with a solution that may work for the collar, but it's definitely going to work for the cuffs. So I only put one button on the cuff because I plan on putting a fur trim around both the cuffs. Now this one doesn't look nearly as bad as this one over here. This one is pretty jacked up. And I think this one is the one that's short as well. It's a hair short but i have long arms and it's it's gonna drive me nuts and i just want to be confident and i want to feel beautiful in it even if it's flawed right um so i have some fur trim that i ordered on amazon it's coming i don't really like these pockets i didn't know that it the pattern had pockets until i started cutting it um so i went ahead and i put them in but 
next time i wouldn't do that so i digress okay so i've got some fur trim coming it should definitely work for the cuffs i hope if so then we're gonna make it work for the collar i did not have the energy to take the cuffs or the collar off and try them again the goal for this piece was to make an apparel piece with buttons and buttonholes i did that now i just want to work on making it wearable where i'm confident so the Amazon package is coming in two days. So we're going to put Fiona over here into the corner and we'll revisit her in a couple days. While I'm waiting on the Amazon package, I'm going to go ahead and wash her and let her, I'm going to put her on a gentle cycle and let her air dry. Then we'll get her all pressed and steamed and ready for that fur trim to come. So I'll go ahead and sew that on and then get to the final review. All right, good night, you guys. I'm actually headed to go film for another video and amazon just dropped something off so i think it is the trim to fix our shirt well my shirt but you guys are here being scared so let's check this out I'm gonna take this trim to the shed and see if it matches up. Let's get my blouse, Let's see what we're working with. Here's, and then here is the trim. Not perfect, but you know what? It will work. This ribbon is what's throwing it off because this ribbon is more pink, but the faux fur is definitely blush. You know what? We're going to make this work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my cuff and I'm just going to sew this over here and wrap it over a few times just to give it some um, thickness. I don't like this though. I kind of want to cover this. Cause that pink really throws it off. But you know what we got here? We got this far. Let's keep it, keep it moving. Keep it pushing. I don't know about the collar though. Can we make it work on the collar? That might be too much. Once again, that pink, just, I don't like that pink. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the dress form and I'm gonna play around with it.
now that I have documented my experience making this outfit, making this top, I call her Heather, Heather the Headache. Now that I have made Heather um, and I've documented that experience, now I want to recap the pattern and the experience entirely. I'm, I'm sure you want to know, do I recommend this pattern? And yes, despite all the flaws, the errors, the headaches, I do recommend this pattern. I will be giving this pattern another go. Just one more though. Just one more try. And if it doesn't work, screw it. I'll never touch it again. So um, I do recommend it. Now, what I don't agree with is the rating. I don't think that this should be rated as easy. And I don't think it should be rated as easy because I feel like there are certain skills or procedures that you should be familiar with before you head into that. Not only just making buttonholes, because I've been sewing for, I first started sewing in 2015. So that is nine years is when I first started teaching myself how to sew. I did take a five to six year hiatus um, where I was just mending or doing little alterations here or there. And so I wasn't making full on garment construction during that time period. But beforehand, I was sewing my tail off. I never used buttonholes. All of last year, I never used buttonholes. I worked with over a dozen commercial patterns in 2023, never touched buttonholes. So this was my first time doing so. Um, and the process was easy. I did all that, all that fretting, all that anxiety for nothing. It was probably the easiest daggone thing out of this entire project. Uh, yeah. So making buttonholes, uh, attaching buttons with your machine. Yes, those are easy skills to learn. I give you that. But then it was the burrito effect, the way that we attach the facing. Mm, okay, that's still not entirely challenging. Mm, okay, am I about to change? Am I about to say that I do agree with the rating? I don't know. I still don't think it's easy. I, I just don't think it should be classified as easy. While it is, it wasn't the most daunting to get through the process, my issue was, I keep flinging that around. My issues was that I mostly, um, my issues were mostly that my notches weren't matching. And I don't know if that was an error when cutting. Maybe I was rushing when I was cutting because that is my least favorite task to do. I hate cutting the pattern pieces and the fiber pieces. I can't stand it. So maybe I made an error there and that's how things just kind of domino from there. Uh, but overall, I still don't think it should be classified as easy. I think, but uh, I do recommend the pattern. I don't think it's advanced either. I just, I don't know. I'm trying to take my experience out of it. But when you see a pattern that's classified as easy and you struggle, it's daunting, you have issues, you can't make the garment, it's really a confidence hitter. It, it really does affect your confidence because you're like, dang, if it's so easy, why am I having a hard time doing it? And so that's why I just don't, I don't think it's an easy pattern. Nonetheless, I, I made my errors somewhere or another. But I still do recommend the pattern. I will try it again. Next time that I try it, I will not be using this poly satin. And unfortunately, I've already purchased two yards of poly satin from Hobby Lobby when it was 40% off to redo this pattern. And that will not get used for this project. I will not. The poly satin stains incredibly so. As I'm sitting here, I'm more than certain that there are some visible staining. Um... Uh, so that is why I won't go with this. I won't go this route. I would find a silky knit that conceals stains because I go to wash my hands. It's water spots everywhere. I go to put hand cream on. It's, it's all over me. It's, it's just, it's, it's staining. Like I'm looking at, this is from putting lotion on my son. So <laughs> it's, I will not use this fabric for this pattern ever again. The next thing, the fabric glue. Now, the fabric glue was a shortcut to compensate for my collar being short. Unfortunately, I didn't read the instructions beforehand, and my fabric glue dried wet. So those are other stains here is the fabric glue. So in hindsight, that wasn't a good idea. I probably should have just pulled the collar off altogether, and if, since I didn't have enough scrap, I probably should have just gone to the fabric store and redid the collar. 
That's what I should have done. But instead, I was eager to get it done. I was eager to get it over with. I already had so much angst and anxiety built up with this garment. And I knew that I had put myself out there saying that it would be my first make nine. So I just wanted to get it done. That's not to say that I was rushing because I did spend over three weeks on this project. This is the one garment that I've spent the most time on. I typically finish a make in one week. I have never spent longer than a week on anything until Heather, right? And there was one week that we didn't even talk. We didn't touch each other. We didn't even, we didn't even look at each other, right? And I picked her back up and started picking up the process and she pissed me off again and she went back on that dress form. So I spent a lot of time on her. Um, I broke up the task significantly so. So I wasn't rushing to get her done. I was just trying to complete these tasks without having to double back so much. Y'all already know how much it sucks to pull out that seam ripper, right? So yeah, and then on top of that, she's fraying like crazy. And I'm using fray check and I'm using my pinking shears because I didn't have a serger. I do now, I'll share that later. But I didn't have a serger then, so if she's fraying all over the place. Mm. Next time around, I would either buy more fabric to cover my losses, just in case, or if I know that it is readily available fabric in that scenario, I would have just taken the collar off and gone back to the fabric store. Now, applying the ostrich feathers. Now, while it was ingenious, um, to conceal the fact that one sleeve was significantly shorter than the other, um, and then that my cuffs were messed up, it did not work out in practicality, right? So another shortcut is that I use fabric glue, the also staining fabric glue to attach these ostrich feathers. And yeah. I should have just sewn them down because there is fabric glue all around this shirt that I just can't conceal. And then it's not the great adhesion. They're not, they're not sticking together well. I should have just sewn it. I should have. Also, I wanted to be fancy and bougie and get ostrich feathers because I thought that it would look a little more chic. When I probably should have just got the freaking pom pom cheap looking crafts craft stuff, right? Because these ostrich feathers are shedding. They're feathers everywhere, everywhere. I may be a little theatrical with my hand. And I look down and feathers are falling. I it I pick up something, feathers are falling. My purse grazes across my arm, feathers are falling. I'll never wear this shirt out. I am wearing it for purposes of the video. I will never wear this shirt out in public. Confidently. Never wearing it again. Um, but that is my experience. I hope you guys learn from my mistakes. I, honestly, I hope that you're kind of inspired to go ahead and try it out. I hope I didn't ruin it for this pattern. But you know what? It is what it is. So thank you guys so much for rocking with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed my transparency. Um, and as always, I love you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.